Welcome fellow horror hounds and welcome to the latest episode of Talk and Stalk, your unholy home for horror. I'm your host as always, Barry, and today's podcast is going to be devoted to a horror movie released in 1988 called Pumpkinhead. Now, Pumpkinhead is certainly a film that has actually attained a bit of a cult following over the years. This isn't a horror film that was a big success or anything like that, but as I said, it is a horror film that has actually come to be appreciated uh, by many people within the horror community, uh, myself being one of them. This is a movie I do like, and it's quite notable actually for being the directorial debut of Stan Winston, a man that really um, needs no introduction whatsoever to anyone that's a film buff, Uh, This is a man, you know, he's basically a legend within the SFX industry within Hollywood. This is the man that created the Terminator in 1984. We got the Alien Queen, um, the Predator the following year, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, among many, many other creations. This man really does have an extensive resume. And as I said, this film was actually directed by him. It is actually inspired by a poem as well by Ed Justin. And uh, of course it stars Lance Henriksen as well, uh, a very established actor, um, a man with, again, a very extensive resume. He's an actor I love, actually. I do believe the first film I ever saw Lance Henriksen in was Aliens, the 1986 film. Obviously, Terminator was a couple of years prior. But um, I didn't actually see the Terminator until after Aliens, as as shocking as that may sound, but of course he played uh, the android Bishop, Um, and his career is just countless films and TV work after then. Um, So with Pumpkinhead, you know, the concept is simple. Um, You know, after a tragic accident, uh, a man conjures up a towering spirit, a demon called Pumpkinhead, to destroy a group of teenagers. So in a way, you know, at its core, this film is about revenge. It's about, you know, how uh, the lengths one would go to uh, to get revenge. But of course, you know, the character played by Lance Henriksen, um, Ed Harley, he actually soon comes to to regret it. Him and this this demon, uh, Pumpkinhead, become one. It's actually his blood that is actually used uh, to, to conjure this demon. And that's the thing I will say that really stands out in this movie is the demon of Pumpkinhead. Um, I think it's an awesome creation. I really do. I think that Pumpkinhead is actually one of the best creations we've had in a horror movie. And uh, Pumpkinhead itself uh, was actually played by uh, Tom Woodruff, who was actually one of the uh, artists on the film. Because basically, I think when Stan Winston... Um, was actually brought in on this film. It was really to be the SFX guy. Uh, They just wanted him to do the special effects, but he kind of saw it as a project, as an opportunity to try and make his directorial debut. He wanted to direct this film. And so he was so busy, uh, you know, working on the story in this film that he basically gave free reign uh, to the artists on this film, one of which is Tom Woodruff, who actually did play Pumpkinhead, um, and uh, they made good use with the budget, from what I understand, in this film as well. Um, they enabled the effects not to use too much of the uh, the very limited kind of three million budget. And uh, considering they were uh, being very kind of, uh, you know, careful, with them, they did a great job. They did a really good job with the practical effects um, in this film. And, you know, at its core, it's kind of a slasher movie in a sense. But, you know, it's a revenge. It's a revenge tale. And, uh, you know, Ed Harley, it's a tragic accident that happens. Uh, Ed Harley's young son, who, uh, you know, gets very little in the way of screen time. But the screen time he does get with Lance Henriksen, um, I really kind of feel the chemistry. Um, I really feel like there's a bond between these two. There's actually a scene where his son has actually made a, a necklace for him. And his father, Henriksen, actually says, you know, I'm never going to I'm never going to take this off. And, he, you know, his son says to him, you don't have to wear it every day, just whenever the uh, the mood fits you in that. And, it, you know, it's quite a, a nice, touching little scene. And the accident that happens in this film, and that's the thing, it is just an accident. I don't feel like, despite the accident, there's, there's any characters in this film that are really unlikable. 
Uh, now, the guy that's actually responsible, admittedly, he does a dick move. He does a rudder. He's on probation, so, you know, I can understand the fear there. He's going to end up in the slammer, but he has just taken the life of a young boy. You know, even if it wasn't, even if it was an accident, you know, and uh, it wasn't premeditated or anything like that. But he does a runner, and of course, the other people want to kind of own up to it, etc. And it does actually get to the point where he says he's not going to screw up his life anymore. So presumably, he is going to turn around and, uh, you know, apologise and maybe serve his time. Um, but of course, I actually like the opening to this film. And I think visually, for a film that is over 30 years old, I think this film holds up pretty well. I really do. Now, I haven't seen this on Blu-ray, but even watching it on DVD, it looks good. Um, what I like is the contrasting colour that we get in this film. We get them kind of dark shots, dark, gloomy shots, and then we get these shots of, uh, for example, in the house at the beginning, it's kind of candlelit. So it kind of goes from dark to orange, dark to orange, and I really like that contrast in colour that we get throughout this film. And I think it's a good opening. Um, you know, there's a family in the house and somebody's banging on the door. We see this guy running for running for his life and he's banging on the door and he's like, help me. And they don't want to help. They don't want to help. They obviously know what's out there. And he's saying that, you know, he is proclaiming his innocence. He didn't kill this child, kill this girl, I believe it is. And, you know, he gets dragged off and and killed. And then it cuts to the present. Uh, and the young boy that's in there terrified is... Um, Ed Harley, Lance Henriksen's character, who obviously, you know, was kind of a witness to this. Now, you know, the very moment that this accident happens, he finds out what happened. There, there's no hesitation whatsoever. He's going to track down this old woman that he's heard has powers. Now, she's someone that, and again, she has very little in the way of screen time in this movie. But I believe the actress's name is Florence Schaufler. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, but she does a great job with the little screen time that she has. Uh, she's this old, decrepit woman that basically tells him from the get-go she can't resurrect the dead, but she can help. And basically what Ed Harley has to do is he has to... And the film is called Pumpkinhead, and anyone would kind of think, well, why is it called Pumpkinhead? It doesn't look like he's got a pumpkin on his head or anything like that. It's He's basically called that, and we find this later on in the film, is that... His remains, so forth, come from a pumpkin patch. And it's actually Haggis, the old lady, that tells Han um, Harley to, to go to the pumpkin patch, dig this up, bring it back, and I can help you. Um, and again, I just love the kind of visuals when he actually goes to this pumpkin patch. It looks great. And and essentially, you know, Pumpkinhead is, is born through she actually uses his blood uh, to accompany the ritual. And obviously, slowly over time, he's becoming one with Pumpkinhead. But he quickly soon, he quickly learns to regret doing this. You know, that he's actually kind of witnessing, he's feeling the pain of these victims. And again, it comes down to revenge. Okay, you know, I can fully understand you're, you know, you're in a very kind of uh, confused, disorientated state. You'd want to get revenge on someone for, for taking the life of your son. But at the same time, what does it really solve? What does it really solve? So he quickly regrets it. Um, but unfortunately, it's too late. The old lady has, tells him it has to play out now. And, you know, he says, I'm going to stop this. You know, I'm going to stop this. And uh, she basically says, well, you'll have to pay the greatest price then. And that basically is because over time they're becoming one and the same. The only way to stop Pumpkinhead is for him to actually kill himself. And uh, yeah, it must also be noted as well, just a little fact in this film, a little bit of trivia. Uh, Ed Harley's dog in this movie is actually the very same dog from Gremlins, uh, the 1984 classic. Um, Zach Galligan, Billy's dog in that movie is the very same dog. Um, in this film. And yeah, as I said, you know, uh, it's the creation of Pumpkinhead. Um, it's just a great creation because we really don't get to see much of him until kind of the end of the film. He's his kind of towering presence. There's actually a shot in the film that I really like. We just see Pumpkinhead, you know, the woman's in the cabin and Pumpkinhead just kind of walks past the window. And, for, you know, we can tell 
he's huge. You know, this is a this is a massive thing. Um, and also, I believe that uh, another little kind of little fact is Lance Henriksen actually had a set of dentures actually made in this film to give him a more rural look. Um, and he basically gathered all of his own props and wardrobe, including his own shotgun, um, to kind of yeah give it a level of authenticity in that um, you will. But there was actually a scene that really had Henriksen come on board for this movie as well. And that was the scene where the deceased Billy, his son, actually sits up and asks his father what he's done. Apparently Henriksen really loved that scene and that was a son that was a scene that he kind of fell in love with and that was a scene that really made him want to take on this uh take on this project. Um and uh, yeah, the dog actor, which I believe the dog actor was actually called Mushroom, uh, did all of his own stunts for the film as well. I'm not actually sure if he went on to have uh, a longer career kind of like after this. But as I said, he was in Gremlins, which is certainly a very popular film from the 80s. Um, and I think Stan Winston, the director, his two children uh, can actually be glimpsed um, as members of the Wallace clan. Because basically Lance Henriksen's character... Ed Harley, he's warned not to do this. He's actually told to just go home, bury your kid, go home. This isn't going to solve anything. You know, and the old lady tells him when, when he realises that this is wrong, this isn't right. You know, he, he as I said, he, he regrets it. Um, and she says to him, what do you think this was going to be? Painless? Do you think this was going to be quick and painless or something? You're a fool. And then he says, um, he says something along the lines of, um, is it, uh, I believe it's God, uh, God help you or something. Um, he says something like, uh, or God damn you, sorry. He says, God damn you. And she's like, he already has son. He already has. Um, but I love the kind of line near the end as well, where he's actually helping the characters now. You know, he realizes that this isn't right. He's made a mistake. And, uh, you know, he gets the uh, the blowtorch and that, if you will, flamethrower or whatever. And he says, you know, I'm going to send it back to whatever hell um, it came from. Um, you know, it's, I think, Pumpkinhead, as I said, a simple concept. But considering, it, considering this was Stan Winston's directorial debut, I thought he did a good job. I did. And there's one scene in the film that I really do like. And it's where um, his character name is actually escaping me, but he actually leads a couple of the characters to this uh, holy ground, if you will. I believe it's like an abandoned church and where he thinks they may be safe. But Pumpkinhead arrives not long afterwards. And again, it's an awesome shot we get to see of this towering demon just kind of stood there. And he does walk into this holy ground. So presumably it can't be holy. It can't be too holy or Pumpkinhead's just that strong. And he walks in there and he sees a crucifix. And this, you know, uh, pees him off, shall we say. And, you know, he smashes this crucifix and all that. And uh, I really do love that shot of him walking through this, you know, this abandoned church, if you will. And there's actually a scene uh, not long before that where he actually gets one of the victims. And uh, he's actually scraped doing a crucifix on her forehead with her claws with his claws, sorry. It's, you know, it's a it's a cool little moment, a cool little shot. Uh, one of the characters tries escaping on his motorcycle and then Pumpkinhead is actually stood there holding the uh, chain. He's removed the chain off his bike and then he just effortlessly just picks up the motorcycle and just chucks him off the motorcycle. And presumably, you know, he's dead from that. I don't believe we see him after that. And, um, you know, there, there's the death, of course, uh, where, you know, Pumpkinhead gets shot and uh, the character, you know, uh, stood by him and he gets impaled. He gets impaled with uh, the shotgun, I believe it is. It's a pretty cool little little death. You know, of course, you're not going to kill Pumpkinhead that easy. And obviously the only way to actually stop Pumpkinhead um, is by Ed Harley actually losing his life. Because, you know, towards the end of the movie, Pumpkinhead actually starts to form this almost humanoid-like life, uh, face, sorry. And he's actually starting to take on, presumably, the face of Lance Henriksen. And Lance Henriksen, of course, actually gets uh, Pumpkinhead's eyes. He starts to look uh, demonic-like at the end of the movie. And, of course, he's actually attacked by a dog. 
and then a pumpkin head actually fills it. So they're actually sharing the same life here, if you will, the same the same life force. Um, so, as I said, with Pumpkinhead, it, it's really, for me, um, it's a horror film that is a little underrated. Do I think it's a classic? No. I don't think it's a classic, but it's a horror film that I'm, I'm glad to kind of know that it does get appreciation. It does actually have a fan base out there. Now, as I said, I haven't seen any of the sequels. Um, I've actually heard the third and fourth films aren't really worth bothering with. Um, I've heard very mixed opinions about Pumpkinhead 2. Um, but I, I've, to, I've been told to kind of uh, steer clear of Pumpkinhead 3 and 4. Um, I know there's been quite a gap between the movies and that as well. So, you know, it's not a franchise where they like churned out 8, 9, 10 films or anything like that. There's just four films in the franchise, but, but still. Um, so, yeah, I think Pumpkinhead... As I said, I mean, I actually saw a few years ago, uh, there was a uh, kind of a mini statue, if you will, actually released. I believe it was a Sideshow statue. Sideshow are one of the big companies out there for, for collectibles, you know, be it sci-fi or horror. And it looked awesome. And I'd love to own it. Just unfortunately, uh, just a little bit out of my price range. <laughs> You know, it's great if you've got the finances and even better if you've actually got the room to actually house these things. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, Pumpkinhead, as I said, I actually think it's a pretty good horror movie. I think it does deserve maybe a little bit more attention. Um, and considering it's kind of a... I know it was met with a lot of criticism upon release, you know, because certainly in the 80s, you know, we had a lot of franchises going, slasher movies and all that were being churned out left, right and centre. And, uh, you know, Pumpkinhead is a film that was, uh, you know, its reviews weren't that good. They weren't that good. But I feel like this film has a real sense of polish to it. I do. Considering this is kind of almost, I won't say a B-movie, because it's clearly on a much bigger budget than, than you know, most B-movies and whatever. Um, but considering the budget, I think this film has a real kind of polish to it. As I said, for a film that's nearly over 30 years old, in fact, I think this film still looks good. Um, I really like some of the visuals and that in this film. Now, you know, this isn't a really a movie about the deaths or anything either, I'd say, because, you know, a lot of the time uh, we don't kind of see much of Pumpkinhead until kind of near the end of the movie. So we get, you know, people being dragged up and there's kind of like a Friday the 13th-esque moment, actually, where the body comes dropping down and a body through the window, etc. Um, I really wouldn't compare it to Friday the 13th. I know some people do. Um, but yeah, so I mean, for example, there's one person that's taken up in the trees. I mean, I've got no idea how Pumpkinhead gets up there. I mean, he's a demon, though. So who knows? Um, but he gets all the way up to this tree because he's very slow and cumbersome. You know, and I imagine Tom Woodworth, I've not actually seen any documentaries on this, but I'd imagine he had a really hard time walking around in that costume. That must have been hard work wearing that thing. That must have really weighed him down. But there's a moment where he's actually got one of the victims very high up in the treetops. And then, of course, drop just drops her down to her to a death. Um, so, yeah, Pumpkinhead, good horror film. Not a classic or anything like that. It's not one of my favourite horror movies of all time or anything. Um, but I think there's actually some... Uh, I think there's some good direction there. I think there's some good visuals. And a great horror movie creation with Pumpkinhead. I think Pumpkinhead's an awesome looking creature. Um, that, uh, like I said, I mean, originally Stan Winston was going to be doing the effects for this film. That's what he's renowned for. But no, do you know what? He wanted to kind of broaden his horizons and actually direct direct a horror movie and I think he did a half decent one so uh yeah anyway that's all I really want to talk about today uh thanks to everyone that listened and uh I'll be back again soon to haunt you and torment you take care and if you've liked what you've heard please feel free to subscribe thanks a lot adios for now